is William Del Pilar, your conservative Latino and pioneer in the fantasy sports industry. Here with my big, with my friend, Big John. And you know, John, I wanted to call you Big John Stud. Yeah, yeah why not? Why not? <laughs> well, you That's have the height. Said. You That's have the height. I have, well, not his height. He was he was almost seven feet tall. I'm just six three. Tall man, tall man. Yeah. And for those who don't know, Big John Stud is an icon in the WWF, WWE, and whatever else. He's even before those times when regional was bigger right, than right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So how you doing, Big John? I'm doing fine. I, I'm in a mood to gab tonight, William. So I hope you have some good topics on tap for tonight. Yes, we do. The NFL owners meeting concluded this week. It was yes. their first in-person meeting, three days of meetings. We've all heard about what happened at the Oscars, you know? That and we good. have another situation of the working class paying for the rich. And mm. that was a topic you brought to my attention. I hadn't planned on talking about it because we can get into the weeds easily with, sure, sure. with, with what is not a Robin Hood story. Okay, the NFL owners meeting. Yes. Perception over reality. Hmm. The reason I bring this up is, statistically speaking, it, it's closer to 50-50 than dominating uh, over time and who wins a coin toss and who wins a game. Right. Now, that's the regular season. Today, we learned something new. What do you think of the overtime, if you can explain what the new rule is? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Big John? Well, there was an overtime rule that was adopted for the postseason. So for the playoffs, where each team is guaranteed a possession. And obviously, look, this was driven simply by that Buffalo Bills, Kansas City uh, uh, divisional uh, game where uh, it was. Hold on. Where, yes. Call it what it is, the 13 second humiliation. It was a, yes. William, is you're fond of calling it the Bills 13 second humiliation. But the truth of the matter was it was a great game. Uh, three lead changes in the last two minutes, and then in overtime, uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, the Chiefs got the ball, uh, Mahomes drove him for a touchdown, Josh Allen never got to see the field again. That prompted a whole bunch of like, oh my God, it's unfair, it's this and that. So there was this rule adopted today at the, uh, at the owner's meeting that said, hey, for next season in the playoffs, if it gets to overtime, the guarantee is each team gets the ball at least once. If they both right. score a touchdown, then it then it becomes sudden death. Um, if one sudden team, death is simply whoever scores whoever first scores one. first after that. So I got to tell you, I don't think I like it. I don't think I like it. I think it's it's a half pregnant type of solution. So well, here's, before you here's, answer, though, yeah. what about the statistic, the 10 to 2 statistic there in postseason play? That's just 12. You know what I mean? It's 12 to me is is you could have quirkiness there. Um, Yo, hold on, hold on. As a data guy, that number is pretty clear. 10, 12 games in overtime in the postseason. Now, yeah. we're talking to elite quarterbacks here, Big John. And so when we're talking elite, we're talking Mahomes, right. you know, uh, 10 had been won by the team that won the coin toss. Seven of the 12 games were won with a touchdown on the opening possession. So I can see your point with that, you know, but still 10 out of 12 does show uh, elite QBs able to dominate today's defense, especially with the fact that, that the quarterbacks wear skirts and are so well protected. It, it kind of puts the defense at a disadvantage. Well, well I, I don't disagree with you. That's why, I think the rule to go away from sudden death in overtime was probably wise, meaning that the only way the team that gets the ball first wins is with a touchdown. See, that I, that I thought was a decent change. But this change is just ridiculous, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Defense, no matter what, is still part of the game. Um, you play the whole game. Unless you're telling me that on every possession the offense scores, which is clearly not the case, you just have to accept the fact in overtime your if you're if you have to kick off your job is to stop them or at least hold them to a field goal see that's the, the way job. i approach it hold that's what the coaches this whole issue was uh 
uh, 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 there were two sides. The coaches were like, we don't need this rule. You know, right. we got to play. I can't remember what coach he said, but what coach said it, but he said, we've got to play defense. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but yeah. it was the owners who pushed it through. And this uh, resolution or rule change had, had come and gone a couple of times already. But because of the Bills game and arguably one of the most exciting games of our lifetime. Agreed. You know, uh, it easily won the change when they said, let's limit it only to the postseason. Well, you know what they say, bad cases make for bad law, you know, or in this case, really good games make for bad law, right? So um, to be honest with you, if you want to fix overtime, my, I have the simplest solution. You just play an extra quarter. That's it. Just play I agree. The, just play you the extra what? quarter. And if it's tied at the end of the first overtime quarter, then you go to sudden death. That's like solid. you just That's keep solid. playing. Right? Okay. right? That would solve it. That would solve no, no, it. I, I agree, Big John. I agree. And right. I'm gonna have the last word here. Sure. These rules have been changed, but previously, the last time overtime rules were changed was because the kickers were too good. The yeah. first team to score. It, it no longer became about getting the touchdown. It became about we got to get to their forty to get that fifty-five yard. Right. You know that. Kid, you know. So that's why it was changed, and now they're changing it again. But I think your answer actually solves everything. All righty, Big John. Next topic: there, were, there was not a lot accomplished at these owners' meetings in terms of uh, what came out of it, in terms of the major news being the overtime. But they are forcing diversity hires. They are forcing affirmative action on NFL teams. Uh, if you want to explain to the audience what that is, and to me, anybody who is hired because of gender or color, ethnicity, religion, or whatever, that's affirmative action. Yeah, yeah. that's probably one of my more libertarian rules, you know? Yeah. Uh, or beliefs, beliefs. Yeah. Uh, explain to the audience what it is and what your thoughts are. So basically they want to, they're coming off the Brian Flores accusations, right? So. Right. Then the Rooney rule, which meant that for every open head coaching position, you had to have at least one minority candidate, which we all know has been a laughable failure. Um, I wouldn't so say failure, but it has not gone as they on paper. Well, it's been a would. failure in the sense that the outcome was expected, meaning that teams would bring in, and I hate using the word because it'll be misconstrued, but token yeah. Uh, uh, minority candidates, and then you get into the question: What's a minority candidate? Is it simply black? Is it Latino? Is it it's, uh, it's is Latino it Asian and black it, and Asian? That is it a female? Tradition. Is a female white? No, 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 no. The yeah. NFL does uh, does distinguish. Uh, the right. reason I disagree, and the reason I'm going to say you're wrong, is because we have gotten hires. Now, what you said is true. Also, uh, teams will bring in, but I don't always follow the teams. For example, the New York Giants. Yeah. Nobody can sit there and say, is it DeBoe? Is that who their new coach is? Yeah, Dable. Brian DeBoe. Uh, Dable. D-A-B-O-L-L. Dable. D Dable. Dable. Okay. There's nobody who could sit there and say he wasn't the hottest candidate. Sure. That has nothing to do with race culture. So in that sense, I agree. You know, but overall, we got Mike Tom. I'm, I'm not saying I agree with the rule, but the rule has not been a failure. Well, it's been a failure only in the sense, like, you. I agree with you. Look, it gave us Mike Tomlin. But guess what? Since it's called the Rooney Rule, Tomlin would have probably been hired anyway, right? So oh, no, no, they did take Tomlin over the better candidate. Wizen huh, was in house, had as much experience and much pedigree, uh, and he turned the loser Cardinals into a super, what well, well, should have been a Super Bowl winning game. Uh, uh, but then the Cardinals became the Cardinals. So yeah, you're right. But Tomlin did prove himself. Yeah. Tomlin's in a bit of a pickle, but that's a different topic. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to talk about that. So, so coming out of this, what they're encouraging is that they start applying sort of the Rooney rule, if you want to think of it that way, uh, to offensive assistant coaches as well. Um, right. Now, why specifically offensive coaches and not defensive or special teams coaches? Um, my guess is because they feel that's a stepping stone or maybe they did some research and said it's more likely for minority head coaches to come from the ranks of the offensive coaches, assistants, coordinators, like a, like an Eric Bieniemy, for example, might be the next guy in line. 
Right, um, right. Big John, you're absolutely right. That's exactly why they did it. Yeah. Look at the Super Bowl. The two whiz kids. Look at Arizona. The whiz kid. It, even, even, even the the Raiders' new coach, Josh McDaniels, been in the league for 12 years. Had a shot earlier, but he's seen probably now as one of the older whiz kids. You know, so they feel that that those whiz kids on offense is the path to head coaches. So right. what they're doing is they're purposely putting people there. I completely disagree with it. I understand the logic. I don't think there's a racial issue with the head coaching. Uh, what happens is you have six or seven head coaches, four or five get fired. No different than four or five or six or eight white guys getting fired. It's just, if you don't win, you lose. And yeah. what happens is coaches, I believe, uh, those coaches actually get an extra year. If it was a white guy, they probably would have been fired earlier. But because of the pressure, and I'm not saying this as a hate or love or whatever, as this is how I see it. And because that happens to me, they get a little bit longer, which doesn't always help but create another losing season. So, for example, if I'm a black head coach and the Jets call, I'm saying, oh, he, he's not at home right now. You know, <laughs> click. So sometimes they feel that like they're forced to take whatever job a lot of coaches are. But 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 yeah. like Brian Flores, that whole issue he created. Sure. You know. And, and and seeing as how the Dolphins have spent this offseason, it's it's clearly not that they're tanking again, but specifically i just hate anything that assumes that you have to hire someone based on the class designation it's just horrible and listen as a libertarian i truly believe this it demeans the individual look look at the supreme court nominee this woman uh, uh ms brown right mrs brown can can you the brown? affirmative action hire yeah. so as far as i could tell she's one of the least objectionable court nominees from the left no, not okay? at all. no, no, no let pretty, me finish pretty. i said from the left okay <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah from the left they love her no but i'm saying she's one of the least objectionable from the left um but my point being is she could have been another antonin scalia it wouldn't have mattered because of the way she was brought into the position when joe biden said the next supreme court justice will be a black woman, woman. right mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that all black women are unqualified. Certainly it doesn't. This woman has been a judge at every level. So clearly she has qualifications. The right. truth of the matter though is now all anybody will do is think of her as the affirmative action hire. You are, de you are devaluing the individual. Same thing goes with NFL with the Rooney rule. How will any black coach or Latino coach know if they got there because they were on their merits or if they got there to satisfy a quota so i think they won't that's just won't. it they, they never will right and, and, and in fact he, big john you're right yeah. uh, i don't mean to cut you off but at no, the no. end of the day i think you are correct because i will never look at that scotus appointment as legitimate in the sense she's qualified why because they said it we we're gonna hire a black woman period that's the qualification so from there became finding the one with the most ideological beliefs of their party. Uh, judge Joe Brown, he's a black TV judge, retired, uh, highly, highly educated, came from nothing. I'm speculating, but I, when I look at him, I'm like, this guy's probably worth 30, 40, 50 million. You know, those TV shows, look at, look at Judge Judy. Right. They, they do a lot uh, in terms of finances when, when, they're, when they're popular. But he's, he's condemning this pick pretty much because he, he's like, look, you know, you're. What about this conservative judge that 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 Biden destroyed, or what he did to Clarence Thomas, or the Latino, the one in the second Bush? I can't remember his name. So, so a lot of people are seeing it for what it is, an affirmative action. But we digress from this sport. I think what makes the Rooney Rule slightly different is there's proof it has worked. The problem is, as with any affirmative action law. And technically speaking, there are no affirmative action laws. Corporations have kind of made this law for themselves to play it safe. If we hire somebody who's black, qualified or not, we've got a black person hired, so they can't come after us. So, so, so there's technically no affirmative action laws, but this is what it boils down to. The problem with all of those is you don't know when to end them because of the political pressure. So they could work magically, but they would never end because of the pressure. The moment you talk about it, you're gonna be called a racist. You know, as you're done, I'll give you the last word and then we'll move on. Yeah, and I would disagree in the sense that I don't think they work. I think that any time you get into someone's business 
from a place of central authority, it never works. It never works. For the, it, it never works on who to hire. It never. Oh, works so you're saying you completely, uh, your libertarian belief, you completely disagree with yeah, any type of quota for affirmative action. No, no, I yeah. get you. Get rid I of it. You. No. All right. Hey, I, yeah. I can't argue that, Big John. You and I actually, it's. I try to look at the big picture and rationalize, but just because everything I said yeah. doesn't mean I would implement it. I'm like you. I'm like no, because we have laws in place and. The problem is we don't follow those laws, or we, uh, we and it's always a politician creating new laws to so have his name on it. All right, onside kicks. This is a rule that has not garnered a lot of pub, but as a statistical monster, I think you would appreciate it. Mm. So, for the audience, uh, uh, the onside recovery numbers dipped to seven point eight percent before last year. And last year, the NFL made a permanent rule that a team may have only nine players in the box when receiving an onside kick. That was implemented before last year because it was 7.8%. Onside kicks became hard to get. Right. What do you think happened, Big John? Did the number rise or fall and what was the rule? It, it probably went up. Dipped the 7.8% from 9, 2018 to 2020 to jump to 13.5%. It almost doubled. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't surprise me at all because, listen, NFL head coaches at all levels uh, get paid to take advantage of whatever rules are out there. That's their job, right? It's so, everybody's job. <laughs> right? So it, it took two years for them to say, okay, look, we can't do the whole crashing all 11 men on one guy. We're not allowed to do that anymore. We have to line them up. Uh, what is it like only seven on one side to kick off or, you know, you can't have more than six guys on one side of the tee. You know, there's all this, all these rules that were legitimately, I think from a legitimate concern for player health, because they, with that study that showed that the most injuries take place on kickoffs and onside kicks, right? Yeah. Plus kickoffs. Like, yeah. yeah. So fair enough. But at the same time, what have we seen in the last year or two specifically is special teams coaches finding kickers doing weird kicks like uh, don't forget that kick that um, the Cowboys did against the Falcons to get the ball back and win the game that weird water I think Zerline called it a watermelon kick. I called it the helicopter where the ball just kept spinning flat on the on the turf kept spinning and nobody on the Falcons knew what to do right they just kept staring at it. Um, now you have the different type of kick that's sort of like a one high hopper that um, they try to put towards the middle of the field instead of the corners so that both sides, even though it's they start out five of either side, they can converge, right? So right. I, special teams coaches have caught up to the rule. So, the so what you're saying is it's become a strategy, yes. not only on the field, but also finding that unique kicker so it's no longer just finding that soccer kicker they're right. looking for a kicker with they're other looking the, skills they're looking for the it's guys involved. doing they're looking for those guys doing those youtube trick videos you know where the oh, guys spin the, the ball sack. Huh? The, hacky sack. the hacky sack guys there's guys i don't know if you've seen them there's guys who do um uh nfl place kicks and punts doing tricks like they'll do a drop kick they'll uh spin it on their head drop it and kick it, like all this weird shit big but, john yeah there was a guy from one of the 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 i jokingly say since we're a politically incorrect show but one of the white countries up north with all the snow i can't remember yeah, yeah. one of those scandinavian norwegian and the lions gave him a tryout this was maybe 10 years ago remember yeah he it was a youtube, YouTube video yeah. with all those i mean those kicks were like oh my god yeah yeah, and, yeah. i mean we were he got people to watch preseason games and watch him kick that were fans i watched it i wanted to see the highlights and yeah. obviously he sucked but <laughs> yeah so like am i surprised the percentage went up no it's still 13 percent, right 14 percent, roughly so the success rate think of it this way it's less than two out of ten times right so right. so it's still a low percentage play but i think at least it gives your team hope which at the end of the game that you to keep fan interest to keep ratings up that's what you want you want if you're Bingo, you hit it. that's if it it's two tier big john you hit it on the head the owners from the fans' perspective and for great television, that's why they're like, yeah, we're keeping this. And the coaches from that strategy and increasing their odds don't mind this rule. I'm sure there are some coaches that hate getting put in that situation. Sure. But the smart ones, they prepare for it. Right. All righty, Big John. Let's move on to 
something I know that's dear to your heart. And that is, oh, I just got stabbed by the tax man. Oh. <laughs> you know, oh at KFFL, when I used to run that, my guys will tell you, yeah, leave, leave William alone. <laughs> it's tax season because I was just, I was angry at the world because there's nothing you can do with it. Uh, 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 but when I show the company, I want the audience to know this. We paid, I, I, wanted, I want to say like 52 or 54% of the money in taxes. We only got like 48% after all the taxes from the lowest level to the highest sure. level. You know, and I was so angry because we were working at a Dave garage. I mean, we had an office, but I still, we were a small company. And to think that this is the American dream and, you know, we always talk about the American dream and who can, how it's out there for everyone. Sure. But this is where I agree with you, Big John. And I agree with you 1,000%. Yeah. The United States government kills the American dream through taxes. Yes. They keep working class people working class right. when you're taking half their taxes. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, we're talking about the stadium issue and you brought this to my attention. Yeah. So I, I'm going to introduce it, but let you take it away. First of all, Buffalo's disagreed to a new stadium, right. $1.4 billion. However, the taxpayers are paying $850 million of it, 61% of the cost, not to mention the upkeep and all that. Right. So let me hand it off to you, Big John, because I know it's a libertarian. Yeah. This one is for you. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is, thank you. This is literally one of the greatest acts of theft ever perpetrated on the American public, and it's repeated. In other words, I'm trying to understand why a private entity is getting its offices built essentially on the taxpayer dole. For what reason? What are they? So, I, oh, John, John, you know the reason. We got. I mean, I hate to say. Yeah, it, I was going to agree with you. Well, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say it's because the municipality, in this case, Buffalo, Erie County, the state of New York they see the bills as being a jobs creator, a jobs maintainer, a revenue producer. So they're like, we got to keep them in town. But here's here's my libertarian mode of thinking. If, if the only way you think your government works is by, by stealing from your citizens, which is what taxes are, and giving them to a private corporation, which is what the NFL and the bills are. With not, antitrust exemption. Yeah. You're not governing. You're not governing correctly, right? Yeah, so, agree. so why, why are the taxpayers? And here's the thing that that where taxpayers are dopey. I'm sure if you polled those idiots up in Buffalo, they would tell you, yeah, we're more than happy to uh, to get this bond going so we can keep our bills. The bills almost made the Super Bowl, man. We want to keep them. Here's what you should be saying. Well, John. There was a Twitter poll, obviously online, yeah. but with 33,000 people voting, you're, 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 there's some truth to it. Uh, approximately 84% plus said that taxpayer money should not be used to finance football stadiums. Okay. And that's I'm what ha- they say. Yeah, I'm happy. But not in the cities they're in. Yeah, that's what I would say too. Good. Look, the truth of the matter is that it in, in a free market, you would quickly find out which communities really wanted those teams in their community, right? you would find out where it made sense in terms of profit and loss for teams to be. Now, if the NFL, for whatever reason, says, hey, you know what? It's good for our business model to have a team in a market like Buffalo. Let's assume that's the case. Well, if that's the case, the but NFL- he's LA, in New York. Huh? Or he's LA, LA in New or New York, York wherever. That, that's one of the rules. We got to be in those markets for TV. Fair enough, but Buffalo's really not New York. I don't know what people from Buffalo will tell you, but as a real New Yorker, Buffalo's not New York. Syracuse, you, th- th- those places are, are those, those places are Canada as far as New Yorkers are concerned, <laughs> yeah. right? But my point is, yeah. if the NFL feels that it's necessary to have a team in Buffalo, the NFL should build that stadium. The Bills you know, should build that stadium. Because I heard someone say, well, the state will own the stadium. Yeah, but so what? They own the stadium. What are they going to do with it? The only now, thing in that- their defense, I did a little research on Petco Park decades ago. Uh, 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 well, first of all, this is a true story. Uh, when they were fighting for uh, Petco Park, well, mm-hmm. the Padre Stadium, pe- the, the, the the national world, the, uh, America itself doesn't realize. I was here. I saw the underpinnings. But that was the, that was a multi-year battle. And they, they were just lying from the start. 
lying from the dark. And when I say lying, I don't mean the toy is bad. We're going to screw you lies. They were just lying to the public as to why they needed it, why they wanted it. But, but here was the lie. Yeah, I guess what I'm referring to as the lie is, no, we love the city. We're going to stay in this city regardless. After the vote went down, uh, I can't, he went to Boston as one of their big wigs here, uh, VP or something out here said, oh, yeah, you were voting to keep the Potters in town. You know, it was kind of like they had made their decisions. And my issue is, I don't know where, Mil where Mil Milton Friedman uh, falls on this, but I would think he would agree with me as much as we loathe it. That's part of capitalism, too. What you is? Know? What is? Uh, 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 meaning capitalism opens the door for companies to do this. Meaning, no, that's not Milton. Milton Friedman would definitely not, not agree with you on that. No, I'm not saying he agrees, but what he would say is that's part of capitalism. No, it's like not. It or not. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. No, because capitalism, there's one basic rule. I'm not talking from the books. I'm talking about from real life. Have you practiced it? Have you owned a business? Have you helped my uncle with his business? Uh, 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 so it's in capitalism, the first thing we we learn is it never hurts to ask, or we're not going to do it because of this or that. Well, why should we do it that way? It's not ethical, or it's not right, or it's not how it's meant to be. Well, it's because there's no law against us doing it. If we don't do it, somebody else will. Well, well I agree with you in that sense, but there, here's the one exception. And this is where someone like Uncle Milty would, would definitely take uh, exception to. When you deal with government, you're dealing with the only body in this country that legally can use force against other people. Right, in other right, words, right, right. the government, what happens when you don't pay your taxes, William? One of two things will happen. Someone, will, <laughs> someone will come and throw you in a cage. And then or charge you penalty. Right. Or <laughs> someone will kill you. And like I don't people, kill you, but no, no, doesn't... people people don't want to hear it, right? But the IRS is one of the few things that don't they're one of the few federal agencies, if not the only one, that doesn't need a warrant to get into to click to jump into your house to take their money, right? They don't need a warrant. Oh, yeah, they, they can confiscate right? it without you having been convicted. Right. Or they could just break down your door. Literally, they don't need a warrant, right? So here's what I'm trying to get at. Like, anything that uses the government to further private business needs is immoral. It's not part of capitalism. The closest thing- John, who votes these politicians in? And it doesn't matter. Vote them out, but they it don't. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. See, that, that's, that's why I told that's my you- my problem with the libertarian belief is there's no accountability. It's like- No, 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 there, is right. no, no there is accountability. The accountability is that government should not be involved in business. No, no, no. That's what I'm talking about. It's not government. We're talking politicians and we talk about the process. People vote for those politicians. So the mechanisms are there. It's just nobody votes his politicians out. So one, you can assume that people are stupid, quiet, <laughs> be quiet on that one. <laughs> Two, uh, uh, you can assume that the people like what their politician is doing and are approving of it. And in our system, which is based off of capitalism, but the foundation of our laws are being constitutional and from where England common law. Uh, uh, to me, it's just, it kind of falls in those gray areas where I'm with you, John, I agree with you. But looking at it, I'm like, there's no law. These are hard truths that I'm referring to. There's no law to stop it. Well, so that well, is capitalism, you know, no, whether we I, want to admit it. No, no, that's it's not, it, it's, it's something called cronyism, not capitalism. In it's the called book, see, no, no, no. It's called crony capitalism. Yes, crony yeah. capitalism. Yeah, cronyism. But it's still an offshoot. Okay. Just because it doesn't fall into what we want it to, it's kind of like uh, in movies or in real life. If we don't know, you know, we think we have our scientists, we think we have all the answers. And then, then that virus mutates into something else they had never considered. That's how life works in everything. Well, yes and no, William, because I'll ask you this in a socialist government, even if pretend you're a socialist, socialists will tell you that it's wrong for the government, for example, to throw dissidents in, in gulags, right? So even, right. so even a hardcore socialist will tell you, yeah, you shouldn't throw a dissident, especially in this country, you shouldn't throw a dissident in the gulag. But, but hold on, does, I would ask you this, does socialism give people a choice? <laughs> well, socialists will tell you yes, right? We know yeah, better, but, but, but socialists... Not, but not, have you, has any government that's socialist been structured in their utopian way, as they always say? No, no. No, it's structured where the few 
We are representative. Our, our structure, but our constitution is also, but our constitution also is a rep is a negative rights uh, form of government, which means yeah, the majority rules, but that doesn't mean they infringe on my rights. So building right, a, right. so so building a stadium in Buffalo on the taxpayer dime is infringing my rights because it doesn't serve any governmental purpose. There's no you're not defending the nation. You're not you're not enforcing laws. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, each state constitution is different, but I, I get what you're saying. Uh, but technically, I would not be shocked that there's you should see the California's constitution. Some of the stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, well, but here's the problem, William. Now that Buffalo, what's next? It took all of literally two hours before Tennessee announces, hey, you better build us a stadium now. This is true. How right? much? You want us to do, give us 500 well, million on, for a new stadium. Hold on. Our Southern friends are a little bit uh, more uh, economical. <laughs> it's only 500 million. 500 bucks. million, half a <laughs> billion bucks. That's what we need. Half a bit. Uh, come on, man. But John, yeah. John, here's the kicker. The Titans only wanted a renovation. It's the politicians. You know, this is important because what about this now? It's not the owner or the team that said, you got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. They just wanted a renovation. That's it. It was a politician who saw the ability to have the big concerts, other venues, these or well, that. Well, yeah. I mean, look, it's much like the pandemic supposed uh, stimulus, right? First with Trump, then with Biden. Like, right, here's $2 trillion for a stimulus. Mm. Then why is everybody only getting 2000 bucks? Like 300, 330 million adults by by two thousand isn't two trillion, okay? Right. It's two billion. Where did you get that extra run up? All that went to pork. All that went to cause the inflation we're seeing now. So what? Do you, so when first of all, I I take umbrage with your assertion. The fact that the Titans said we only want a renovation, and the government says no, no, we'll build you a new one. Here's the problem. Why should the Titans expect the government to do anything for them? Oh, 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 oh. if somebody's going to give you a freebie, John, are you going to say no if it's something you want? But or, that, okay, hold on, your car could be four years old and you love it. Then somebody says, Big John, I got something to handle that girth. And you go, Oh, yeah? Yeah, listen. I've got this car I'm going to give you, Big John. Yeah, hold listen, on, listen. it's a realistic example. Listen, if the, if, if the municipality went to the Titans and said, We want to build you a new stadium, then you're right, they'd be idiots not to take it. But at the They're same time, I get it. Right. But at the same time, anyone who disagrees that it is not the place of government in any sort of construct that the Constitution was founded under, you can't you can't expect governments to buy like what's next? Seriously, what are we what are we expecting the government to provide? Look, it's like Foxconn, right? Why? What's next? Eminent domain? We're going to take people's property to build the stadium? That's next. If it hasn't happened already, that's next, right? You know, John, so, so it's 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 going to get worse until we fix. It's a completely different topic, uh, but until we fix our education system to teach people to be critical thinkers, and I'm not talking about just in one section. Yeah. That's from elementary, yeah, to, yeah, I agree. to high school to college. It's 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 a learn trait. But once you gain that ability, I mean, look at you and I, there's stuff we shouldn't know about. And we're just average Americans who actually read under, uh, and try to understand. It, I guess what I'm trying to say is we try. So we That's succeed. why public schooling should be abolished, William. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you. And even though I've given you hard times on both of them, I agree uh, on, across the board. Yeah. Every well, topic, me... we disagree, but I agree with your foundation because yeah. you're right. And let's end it on this, William. Let the people remember this one sentence. Taxation is theft. Give me liberty. Just remember that death. taxation is theft under all circumstances. All right. I want your, uh, 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 for, for the audience, they did pass a couple of uh, injury data resolutions. And one was mandating all clubs to use approved sensors to collect player data. And that's going to, that, that'll create better construction of, say, helmets, things like that. Yeah. And the other one was a requirement for all linemen, tight ends, and linebackers to wear a padded cover known as a guardian cap. And that's to avoid concussion. Both smart moves. There's not much to talk about here. We both agree with it, but yeah. what's your word on that? Yeah, I don't disagree with it. Um, again, I'm for maximum choice. So if like at the same time, I also understand liability. So yeah, if they want to wear the kazoo helmets and to prevent concussions, absolutely. Right. Here's hey, trivia John. for you, William. Who was the first guy to wear a kazoo helmet in the NFL? Let's see if you can pick this out. I remember oh, I who it was. 
I, I probably some it, white. It was free safe. No, no, it was free safety. <laughs> Mark Kelso, if you remember really? him on the Bills, uh, he was their captain for a while. But he, yeah, he yeah, was so the first one. If you down, remember, actually. he wore something that looked like he had a foam covering on his helmet. Uh, I mean, and he was the first one who started wearing a special helmet, I think, specifically designed because he was getting a concussion every other game. That's right. That's right. That's so, right. Yeah. That poor guy. I hope yeah. he's doing well. All right, John. Uh, we know there was a big trade of Tyreek Hill. The cheetah was sent to Miami. Uh, that had to do with Drew Rosenhaus demanding he be the highest yep. paid player. Thus, the Chiefs just really couldn't afford it. Now. The Chiefs are supposedly making some cause, some serious cause, and they're ready to package something together uh, to get a top tier receiver if one is available. Any remorse from them with the Tyreek Hill trade? Or do you think they just realized we just don't have it with our current core? Well, I'll tell you, I I heard Andy Reid talk about this earlier today, and I he said, look, there's no animosity towards Tyreek Hill. He wanted to get paid. We couldn't afford him. So we maximized what we could get in return for him. See, to me, that is a great statement of free market principles. The guy thought he was worth X. We thought he was worth Y. We negotiated. We couldn't get there. So what did we do? We maximized our value for him. Perfect. That's the way it should work. Well, that's now, a PR talk, at least, and I agree with you. Well, and, yeah, and uh, look, I, to be honest with you, it yeah, Drew Rosenhaus played hardball. The timing was horrible. Had the Chiefs done... Uh, the well, the deal, timing was horrible by one week. Yeah, one week they, only. like you said, if they had just signed them before Devontae Adams uh, got his money, then they would have had him at that roughly $19, 20000000 million a year. You um, know what? Uh, uh, Big John... Uh, uh, before we, we go to the next topic, though, I do think Devontae Adams is a better overall receiver. I'd rather have him. If I needed one big play and I had the arm, give me Hill every time. But if I need a football player for a game, give me uh, Devontae Adams, who's a more complete player. Yeah, as far as uh, I'm concerned, they're, they're 1A, 1B. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they are, are close, but, but very people close. just assume Hill is better because it's Speed. Well, you know, you got to be a great blocker. You got to run tight routes. You got to, right. it's not just about, and I'm not saying he doesn't do that, but Devontae Adams has perfected, perfected himself into a machine. Yeah. Big, big John, there's a rumor going around. Ooh. Oh, down in Dolphin land. They're going to upgrade the QB position with an old legend. <laughs> the football rumors are out. Tom Brady to the Dolphins is going to happen in a massive trade. What have you heard? I haven't heard anything outside of what you've heard. Honestly, I think this is some sort of practical joke that originated in New England. I think the original story story started with the reporter who broke the news that Tom Brady was going to end up in Tampa Bay. So I think that's why people are giving it legitimacy. Look, I don't know if it's true or not. Um, if it is true, I can't even imagine that Tampa Bay would do it. Uh, they, they hold his rights. So if, if Brady retires, he's got to stay retired and for the length of his contract, basically. Um, if, if, if he comes back and he says, I want to play for the Dolphins, it's up to the Buccaneers. They, they'll have to trade him. Seeing as how much the Dolphins already paid to get, um, Armstrong and, and uh, and Edmonds and Mostert and Hill, I don't know how much draft capital they have to make a trade that would justify Tampa Bay sending Brady. Let me cut you off here, Big John, because you're taking this answer to scientific depths in intellectual analysis. Of course, when, that's what I do. When, but you did it so well, and I'm thinking. This man could be a politician or he can we see him as the most honest guy around because you gave an actual realistic answer if it was a legit question. Yeah. But the reason I brought this up is because I'm a political junkie. I was involved in the political world. And to hear coach Mike McDaniel go and watching him at the press conference, we go, that's what you call fake news. <laughs> yeah. it's, hey, it, maybe it, Trump it, started it. Maybe Trump yeah, started maybe, it. Maybe, but the point is, is John, that's just, for me, I mean, you were so polite, God bless you, yeah. but to me, had you asked me that, I go, what you talking about, Will? Yeah, I don't think it's real. Like I said, I don't think it's a real, I don't think it's a legitimate rumor. Um, it's oh, it's I, just, I, it's just somebody who I think, given that, right, he was, 
the real discussion, and yeah. I want your comment, and there we go. The real discussion yeah. is how does something as out there as that gain traction? Your response, and we'll move on. Sure. I'll give you a Mark Twain uh, quote, I think. It's much easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. So it's easier to set up a lie that people want to believe in than to actually face up to the fact. So, you know, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but, but here's how, what, what I will add to it. And the reason that is able to work is because we've come to realize that when we were young kids, the classifieds had the legit section and they had a CD section. The back page. Yeah, but that, <laughs> that's what social media is yeah. made up in terms of seediness and dumbness and everything. And not because people are stupid. Once again, we, we, have, we go at 100 million miles an hour now because we got so much to do. We don't pause to think. You know, well, critical thinking, like you said. politics has yeah. transversed into pop culture and sports. Right. So what, what, what is actually the case is what you said. People aren't critical thinkers. Um, and I'm not saying everyone needs to be, oh, my God, I'm spending 30 minutes an hour to deep dive into it. They don't need to do that. Sure, they do. Everybody goes to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, but here's what I would say to people. Uh, assume that everything you read is false and then work your way back from there. That's one easy way of doing it. So when you hear a rumor, it's the smart way. Yeah. Back. Brady to the Dolphins. You'd like, wait, what? why? How? He just came out of retirement. Now yeah, he's going how? to the Dolphins. Yeah, exactly. How? Why is he going well, well, to the well, Dolphins? I, it, it, like you said, it's a simple question. And the first question is, it to me it should be the first question for everyone. Why would the Bucks do that? Yeah, and that and that question is like that non-starter, and then we move on. All right, Big John, let's get into some Will Smith and Chris Rock. Ah. <laughs> As we know, the Oscars have been a terrible show. Yes, terrible ratings disaster. Nobody cares, and part of it is because of the the political culture, but the other part is the political culture going too far? My, and what I'm saying, Big John, is they can, those actors, they can do what they want, et cetera, et cetera. But now the industry itself has become the actor's ideology. So nobody's going to see many of these movies. So, and the reason I say that is that's caused a big groundswell of losing viewers because there's no interest. The, the, the actors, and we become a fragmented society. Uh, right. I disagree if you don't agree, but, but I believe we become such a fragmented society. It's not like you and I with four channels, if you count PBS, the Oscars was a big event. Right. Now there's 20 other events going on. But uh, I'm going to give it here to you to get your full 100% thoughts, but let me set it up here. For the audience that may not realize this, uh, and I think Big John, many may not, because who don't follow entertainment as junkies right. do, uh, that because Will Smith is like, you're all American guy. You know, Jada Pika, it, it, it's like you're American couple, and uh, they're in an open marriage. Yeah. You know? yeah. And as a sailor, I, I, I'm not ashamed, but I'm not proud. But I've seen a lot. So when I saw that, I'm like, oh, my. You know, I mean, anybody's going to go, oh, my. But, I, but I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was initially monogamous. Uh, but off camera, somebody used the C word, cuck, in reference to Will Smith. But right. that's part of how some people look at, at, at an open marriage. Uh, and what happened was, Behind and, and and Jada, his wife, had an affair. That's how I guess it all snowballed. Uh, and the oh, reason don't, it came don't out snowball in these cases. <laughs> but the reason all this came out is she did not like how Will Smith was being seen as an idiot having a wife step out on right. him. Right. So, and the reason I set this up is because this is important. And and do you want to take it away, John, or you want me to keep going? Sure. No, that's fine. So. Um... Yeah, I, you, you kind of gave the background okay in terms of Will Smith. Look, Will Smith for years used to be the black guy that white people loved, right? Because he was the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He was, he was a rapper who was non-threatening. He was always rapping about positive lyrics. He never to said... Put it, put it in context, yeah. at one time he was America's leading uh, movie maker in terms of dollars. Yeah, yeah. he, he was a, one of America's leading men. And 
like I said, his appeal went across racial lines. He wasn't just black famous, to use the quote. He was famous famous. Oh, man, I love him. Did you love him? Yeah. Um, I'm very indifferent towards him. Oh, like, I don't, I don't love him. I don't like anything. I don't love him. I don't hate him. He's just, you know, he is what he is. And look, he's a contemporary of ours. He's 53, 52 or 53. Um, roughly right around our age. So he's he's a contemporary of our generation, all right? So, um, but these things about his marriage, look, it's a, <laughs> by most objective standards, it's a weird family, right? So you've got the kids who at any given point are either gay, uh, pansexual, fluid. Uh, but before America, Big John, yeah. Big John and I do not claim to come from functional families. We had yeah. our own dysfunction. But this is taking it to another level. Just yeah, that's what, don't think we're just that's what I meant. Like uh, on an objective scale, if you don't think they're weird, they're at least like interesting, if you want to use that word, right? So the kids are all over the place. They're not out there. They, they're out there. They're out there. Um, Will Smith, before he got married, there were always rumors about his sexuality. Now, mind you. I had no clue. I, I don't care one way or another, honestly. It, it didn't affect me at all. But there were rumors that he was possibly gay and i want to be very careful i'm not saying this this is rumors that were out there then well, come his, on now with the nickname of fresh prince from bel-air uh, <laughs> yeah. whatever um but the the other thing to keep in mind is also that when he did get married and then the whole thing about the open relationship it it blew up in his face on live tv basically with the jada pinkett interview i don't remember the guy she, she was banging on the side but it just came out the lucky guy i looked him up yeah, today. it came out during an interview with will smith in the room and you look that even if you're in an open relationship why are you publicizing it why do people right. have to know um what are you yeah, trying to be the poster child right. for this i mean i don't understand why this had to be public it, uh, Patrice O'Neill used to say, do your dirty in private, you know, do your dirty in private, no matter what you're into, just do it in private, you don't need to, you know, which is always what libertarians say, do whatever you want, we don't care, just don't put it, don't rub it in our face. Anyway. America, Patrice O'Neill is a great late comedian. Yes, the gr late great, one of my top three comedians, and the top two are Carlin and uh, Lenny Bruce, and not Carlin, uh, Richard Pryor and maybe Lenny Bruce for, for different reasons. But anyway, so um, during a break in the official US telecast, but this was captured on the live satellite feed, which goes out to other nations. Australia got it live. Uh, Japan, Australia, right? <laughs> um, during the break, Chris Rock comes out and being a comedian, oh, and people will remember break. he's done this before. Like uh, two or three years ago, he when Jada Pinkett was boycotting uh, the the Oscars for being too white. If you remember that whole hashtag oh, yeah. thing, uh, what was Chris Rock's joke? He goes, uh, "Jada Pinkett Smith boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties." Nine, neither one of us was invited. You know what <laughs> I, I mean? So that. right. So he's always gone back and forth with them. Um, so the fact that he looked at her and said, oh, Jada, uh, glad to see you, uh, looking forward to seeing you in G.I. Jane, G.I. Jane 2, which of course made reference to uh, Demi Moore's character who had the jarhead look, she shaved her hair and everything, right? Now, Jada's still, still training, but right. Jada Pinkett Smith has alopecia. Now, that alopecia causes balding, right? Among other things, it's an autoimmune okay. disorder. So yeah, she's bald, but she shaved her head to own it. You know, like I'm not going to have patches of hair. I'm just going to shave the whole thing and own it. So that was her choice or whatever. So he made a joke about it. If you watch the tape close, and here's why I think this is like a pro wrestling work. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent convinced that this was a real thing, but let's assume that it was. Okay, so I'm stating up front. I don't think it was real. Well, let's assume it was. When he made the joke, Will Smith is very clearly seen laughing. Like he laughed at the joke. Exactly. Jada Pickens Smith also very clearly rolled her eyes. Like, uh, you know, like one of those. Then the next thing you know, you see Will Smith walking up to the stage, doesn't say a word while, while Chris Rock is doing things. Hey, brother, come on, what's up? You know, not panicking. And he gets slapped, he gets bitch slapped to be to be perfectly clear, boom. And then when he turned around and walked away, 
Will Smith was still smiling. Uh, smirking, uh, right? Smirking, smiling. I'm not sure. And then when he got back to his seat, he started yelling profanities at oh, yeah. Chris Rock. Yeah. Poor Chris Rock was like, hey, what's going on? It was a joke. It was a G.I. Jane uh, joke. And Will Smith said, keep my wife's uh, effing name out of your mouth. And then he repeated it again, but using his angry black rapper voice. Get your, get, keep my wife's name out of your mouth, you know, or whatever. So weird stuff. Compounded by the fact, no security, no police, no guards, no bodyguards. If you think Chris Rock is walking around anywhere without at least two guys, uh, six foot eight, following him around, or the same thing with Will Smith, where were those guys? Now I didn't. I didn't expect them to jump on the stage because nobody knew if it was an act or not. But afterwards, right, 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 right. You're not gonna. You're not gonna do something afterwards. And then the sick of uh, sycophatic. No, no, no. The showrunner would have known if it was an act or not because they do have res- They have rehearsals. Right, right. But I'm saying, like the Academy itself. Let's assume it's real. You're still going to give Will Smith the award. You're not immediately going to say. We don't condone violence. And that's the part of this, William. And I know there have been so many different takes. But to me, here's the number one take. You don't respond to words with violence. I don't care who it is. And Will so Smith is- just, I, I, think, I think there's a gray area, but this was not one of them. <laughs> this no, was nowhere near well, it. The this, gray this area was... you're talking about is something the Supreme Court labeled fighting words like if i say to you hey william i'm going to come over there and beat you senseless and choke you to death you Thanks. might reasonably then, right them's fighting words as the old saying goes and you might reasonably be expected to physically defend yourself however me saying your wife looks like gi jane is nowhere near that standard and Chris and, Rock is a goddamn comedian too plus so it wasn't derogatory which is a straightforward joke but here's my point even if it was derogatory, let's assume it was, it's still not a reason to hit somebody. You have oh, no, to, people have to accept this. Like, what does this mean? Are stand up comedians now targets in clubs when they offend somebody? No, is John, it okay right. to slap it, somebody? Here's something else, too. We'll, uh, we can mix it all up. It's a final topic. Have a yeah. little fun with it. But Shannon Sharp came out and said it. It is the yeah. same thing in the Latino culture. Uh, there's a lot of similarities. Yep. In, yeah, I know in, what you're going to say, and I get it. And in Latino culture, it's like when you slap somebody, it's like you're not even worthy of being getting into a fight with or getting punched. That's it's, why it's, it's called a bitch now, slap. That's why it's called a bitch yeah, slap. Yeah, you know, exactly. Because this, the stereotype of it, which is an ugly stereotype, is keep your place, woman. Yeah. That's kind of like, you, you know, you're, you're my woman. I own you is, I mean, that's a terrible stereotype, but that's, I mean, a terrible belief, but it's a stereotype. Same thing in the gay on. community from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, so it's probably more universal than cultures want to give it. You right. know? But at the end of the day, to me, that's what makes it worse. And what's your take with Shannon Sharp? Because I'll be honest. This that was a fr- I got angry. I because I'm like I got angry at Chris Rock because I'm like I'm foot five foot seven. Yeah, you would knock my block off. Yeah, but it's something like that, and we were in that situation. You, it's I guess what I'm trying to say is even when I know I'm going to get my ass kicked, yeah, I'm going to go up there. You know, yeah, so look, I was angry at him. Yeah, so I, sharp. I I hear you, and I saw the Shannon Sharp clip, and I agree. Look. I understand what Shannon Sharp is saying. I also fully understand his point of, oh man, even though we shouldn't be viewed in this way, they represent the black community up there and look what they did. Like this is an excuse for every racist in the country to look at him and say, see, them blackies, you can't, you can't give them anything nice. Look at them, they're slapping each other, you know. Shannon Which is, Sharp saying that, not, not Big John. <laughs> right. No, so, so what I'm what I meant is I even understood Shannon Sharp's point on that right to some extent I don't agree with him that Chris Rock should have somehow retaliated um, again 
I no, think, he wasn't saying Chris Rock shouldn't retaliate per se. He's just saying how the culture is. Right. Know? Well, and Shannon Sharp, what he would have done. Yeah, but well, that's what I was going to say. Shannon Sharp said, if if he had done that to me, it's on, no matter where oh, yeah. we are. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's what I'm saying. You know, you do that to me. Oh, you're not making it off stage. Well, good. I mean, kudos to Chris Rock for, for if it was, again, I emphasize this, if it was real and not stage, uh, Kudos to Rock for maintaining his composure and remaining a comedian throughout it, which I, you know, I love stand up comedians as a genre. I love them as personalities. So the fact that he was able to maintain that, that professionalism as a stand up, many props to him. You know, um, I agree, but I there's also a, 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 a big part of me that believes he didn't do that because he was scared bleepless, you know? Well, he's um, smaller He's smaller than Exactly, Rose. exactly. And, and let we'll, me say this about Chris Rock. He has actually aged well. Very yeah. dignified look in that touch. Yeah. You know, he's always playing, this, playing that, that, that skinny, you know, yeah, nerdy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, because I, I, that's the first time I've seen him in a long time. Well, Will Smith has also been in training for a lot of those action movies. Yeah. Uh, so, he, I think he's he's bigger than him. He was certainly taller than him. And I think he's beefier than him. But you're right. Like, first of all, Will Smith isn't rolling up on someone my size or like yes. someone the rock size or, you know, like... There, there's Which a brings up the question, yeah. Big John. Would he have done this to to any of the following hosts? I actually checked out their list. Okay. Uh, and uh, 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 there's only one woman I would include on this, even though I did it. But I don't think he would have done it to Whoopi. <laughs> she would have knocked his ass out. Or, or Rosie O'Donnell or any one of them. But yeah, you're okay. right. Alec Baldwin. You think he would have done it, to Alec no. Baldwin? No. Steve Martin. Well, let me just say this. He wouldn't have done it to any white guy. Uh, oh, he wouldn't have done it to any white guy because it would have been the end of him in Hollywood, whether we like to whether we want to admit uh, it or not. I don't I don't think I mean, you could be right. But if he if he if he if he if that. he slugged a white guy and especially an older white guy, somebody older than him. Oh, I think anybody older. I mean, I think yeah, but especially a white guy really in Hollywood. Older. Oh, yeah, no, he'd be done. Uh, I, I think it depends. Had he slugged Frazier, he'd still have a great working career. Uh, Kelsey Grammer, you know, oh. something like him. Well, but, Kelsey uh, Grammer's. Uh, but but you know, yeah. see, I don't think race is. Had, had, I, I can see it with the culture, uh, but in that time, if he really believed what he was doing, let, let's just go on that premise. It wouldn't have mattered what color guy up there. No, if he um, if he was angry, you're right. He, it wouldn't have mattered. We both agree that we think it's staged. I oh, think there it, is a brother on here. Because I was like, my list, he destroyed it all. But uh, Richard Pryor, would he have done that to Richard no, Pryor? No, he never would have done that to Richard Pryor. First of all, Richard Pryor would have cut him excuse my Ooh, look at big job getting yeah. excited i'm sorry Ooh, turning uh, into ex William. Ex ex i'll bleep that out i'll bleep it out in post but <laughs> but here's the thing richard pryor grew up in a brothel richard pryor grew up around mobsters like if you ever listen to a stand-up where he worked for italian mobsters and they were all telling him how they like to kill people and they were like hey richie come here i stuck a nice pick in a guy's face <laughs> you know listen to his routines uh those are not put on. He grew up in some rough, rough environment. So Will Smith is not rolling up on Richard Pryor. Now, I'm assuming you're talking about the Richard Pryor before he got MS, right? <laughs> but well, that, uh, unless there's another Richard Pryor, you know? No, no, Richard Pryor, he would never do that to, never. Yeah, and that's the whole point is, that's what got me so angry He picked too. on the little guy. Exactly. He was, the, he was the perfect guy to pick on if it was real uh, because he's not fighting back. Like someone said, um, so there's a meme out there with The Rock saying, hey, uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock saying, hey, Jada, you look like G.I. Jane. And then they cut to the other part of the meme of Will Smith pointing at him like the Frenchman's like, ah, you know, like, that's funny. Yeah. Who's, who's going to roll up on The Rock? Right. Or, exactly. or any of those guys, you know, any of those other action stars. He picked, now, he picked on a skinny comedian. That's it. Now, Smith came out and apologized first. I thought he gave it gave his greatest performance ever when he accepted the Oscar crying and apologized to the audience and the but not the rock. Right. He came out today and apologized uh, to rock. You it's, it's not really a legit question to ask you because we both think it's staged, so it doesn't matter. Right. But let's say it wasn't. Do you think that be that's a, enough apology to put it on Instagram to rock? Hey, Chris, no. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 because again. 
if I'm Chris Rock, I didn't do anything to get hit. Uh, it's up to Rock whether he, or not he chooses to forgive him. But from the Rock, from um, it's up to Chris Rock to choose to forgive him or not. But from Will Smith, Will Smith should be in jail right now. He what should does be. Say this is an apology by Smith to Rock. No, but I'm saying Will Smith should be in jail. Chris Rock refused to file a police report, right. and to me, and that's the, forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, and LAPD basically said, "Hey, he refused to." But he's you know, Leo Terrell, a lawyer, a Democrat lawyer, though, came out and said that the cops didn't need him to press charges to charge him. Any well, idea why I don't know. If, that? Yeah, Is that I don't it know. Was on public on video, maybe. I don't know, but I they, the police did make a statement that. Um, that Rock refused to file a police report. Right, that was the exact right. language. And they said, but should he decide to do so in the future, we are ready to investigate the matter or something like that. Which of course, investigating the matter is just looking at the video, again, if it were real. Um, that's why I also think it's fake. Chris Rock is not a, a, a gangster rapper. He's not a thug or a, a, a somebody from the hood. You know what I mean? Uh, He's not, he's not, uh, who's that guy, um, Suge Knight. He's not Suge Knight. He's not one of these guys who's liable to shoot you at the end of the day. So why wouldn't he file a report if it was real? If it was real. Oh, well, that's obvious. I mean, it's, it's, even, it's, that's part of the Hollywood circle. Keep it in house. No, you know? I disagree, man. Because, no, I'm not listen, saying I, I disagree with you, but I'm saying that's how it's being viewed. No, you know? I, I, I understand that. But I think if I'm Chris Rock, if, if Will Smith, if it's real, if Will Smith faces no consequences, what am I telling? Like Chris Rock still does stand up. You know what I mean? What does that tell the audience? If I insult but, you, but, but, I'm going to let you slap me. Well, here, let me say this. One of two things are going to happen. He's going to create a comedy skit out of this. I'm sure he will. And and shame Will Smith, and that's how he gets back at him. Or how do you shame a cop? Of, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's, that's just an <laughs> apology. I mean, or it's no big deal. But you shame him, but without a joke. I mean, oh my God, how many little pieces of jokes is he going to do in a night? I mean, that's how you know you you start to you know. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. That's one way, or. He's uh, <laughs> going to struggle, you know, because at the end of the day, like you said, nobody's going to see him with the, you know, any kind of respect or I don't know. that nature. Yeah. All right. Got to find a one. Uh, where did that name go? Where did that? Uh, it's like, would he do it to this guy? Well, we know he wouldn't do it to Burt Reynolds. Frank Sinatra, he wouldn't do it. Oh, he'd never make it up to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks. Huh? Tom, Tom Hanks? Hanks? Probably. You think so? I think Tom Hanks is one of those icons. It would violate the white guy rule I stated earlier, but you mean just physically? <laughs> uh, physically, he could probably roll up on Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, from what I understand and from what I've seen, one of the most docile people on the planet. Docile. No, he is. Big John, any final words for the night? No, Before I'm I done. I've that. talked a lot. It was it was a great show. I felt uh, we got a we got a lot on the across tonight. So I'm glad that you were able to uh, provide us with such interesting topics, William. Look, I'm a pragmatic fool, but being pragmatic to me is the only way to go. And some of the stuff just makes you laugh. Some of it makes you shake your head, uh, whether it's sports, entertainment, or whatnot. But hey, that's what points on the board is all about. Look, people, do not forget to visit sportsgrumblings.com where you can see many of our other podcasts as well as our articles you can learn what john thinks of being a libertarian we have no guests but hopefully we're going to be talking some more fantasy football or baseball down the road and america thank you so much to be hanging with two fantasy sports pioneers again sportsgrumblings.com and we will see you guys next time peace